We're also going to be talking about digital transformation, but in a very different field. Max Conze had a dream job in technology and design. He was running Dyson, one of the most innovative companies for about seven years, and he left to go and join a German legacy media business with four billion euro turnover, but free to air TV as well as pay TV as well as radio. Max, why did you choose to go and join and try and transform ProSieben Satines? Well, because I, one, I love entertainment just as a human being. You know, I think entertainment is uh, something all of us really care about. It's, of course, an industry in transformation. I kind of like transformation, uh, and I've done that before. And uh, then when I looked at uh, Posibum Sardines, of course, we are, uh, you know, large free trade broadcast in Germany, but we're also so much more. No, we have uh, really exciting digital properties. Uh, you know, we, may, we, we help people fall in love, we help people have great experiences, and it was uh, really an interesting challenge for me to think about how can we put all of these bits and parts together uh, in a way that uh, shapes and drives our future. And yet, the world of consuming images, moving images, has changed. Netflix last year had a budget, supposedly, of $13 billion to spend on content. You are still a legacy commissioner and broadcaster of programming. How do you compete against these new ways people consume video? Well, I, I, I think it, 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 you know, we need to jump into the future, and we need to do that with more energy. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing that. I'll give you two examples. Uh, you know, we have a digital property called Studio 71. Uh, you know, it's one of the leading digital video players in the world, generates 7 billion uh, video views globally. We just did a German original, Le Floyd versus the World. I mean, it's fantastic uh, doku and entertainment, digital only. So we need to do more of that. We are in the midst of investing in a streaming platform that will be, you know, the best analogy for those that understand America. Well, a German Hulu is not to do what Netflix is doing, but is to do something that stands next to it. Because Netflix is really good at what it does, but entertainment is such a, a broader world. Entertainment is news and is sports and is big shows. And, you know, we're very, very strong in all of these things. And we're trying to create one platform where Germans can view and see and access everything they want and they love to see, and we're launching or relaunching this in the middle of the year. So for people who don't know German media, explain where Proceed and Satines fits in people's consumption in Germany. Well, if, you know, Germany largely is a, particularly for our American friends, you know, it's a free-to-air market, um, and, and really you have ProSieben, you have RTL Group, and then you have the public broadcasters, and in a simple sense, you know, each has about a, a, a third of the market. Um, and, you know, what I find, what's been fascinating for me to come in and, you know, you spend time with the team that does The Voice, you, you know, you see these things, is still what incredible convening and star power uh, we have, you know, a voice finale is 10 million people in Germany viewing it, it's a cultural event, it's, you know, it's a big thing. So how do we take those things and make sure they are not identified as, well, that's TV and TV is yesterday, but they're just great entertainment and how do you bring them alive in the channels of today, but also in the channels of tomorrow? And, and, and so in many ways, I think, you know, simply thinking about who are the people I'm serving, what do those people want to watch, being content first, being digital first, um, and jumping into the future. Still, you took over at a time the markets had said, we have concerns. The share price had been dropping. Yeah. Let's talk about the specifics of how you transform a business to convince the markets that you have a robust future. Um, so I came to meet your team in July in an off-site. You'd been there for about a month. Yeah. I'd previously been running Wired, and I was writing a book looking for corporates doing really ambitious transformation, innovation. What have you learned? What have you been able to achieve in the half year since July? Yeah, so we've really focused on you know, building a very clear strategy and game plan that is all built uh, around the consumer in the core, uh, which actually matters because one of the things, 
you know, I'm not a media guy, but I've been around consumers and technology all my life, uh, that I found is that media is quite B2B, and part of the reason why the Netflixes and Amazons of this world are being successful is that they're very, very focused on that end consumer, people like you and me, and what is it that they want in entertainment and service and an offering. So I think being very focused uh, on that and then building, you know, entertainment people love and commerce and services that people need and want around this and focusing the company on growth. So we've been very focused getting that strategy clear, number one. Number two is culture and people. Um, you know, running the company with a broader leadership team, with more diversity. Uh, it just so happens last week we moved all of the leadership team on a new floor that's completely open space. And, and I know all of you who run startup companies will go like, yes, come on. But, you know, for businesses that have been around for a long time, some of these are still new ways of, of doing things, and that's very important. And getting, you know, getting the culture to be entrepreneurial and running and operating more like a couple of hundred people startup than an incumbent uh, media company, I think, is critical. But if you're trying to change the culture, that often means getting rid of certain people who you see as blocking the culture. Have you been embarking on, let's say, a senior management transformation? Yeah, so, so you know, there's been some change and I think that's completely normal. Uh, but, but it's also, it's, it, it's what I found is actually great many people in the business, by the way, great creators, and one of the things, <laughs> You know, it may not be obvious, but, but, you know, I spent the past seven years working with engineers, and, and actually engineers are creators. They dream of making a product. They don't dream of profit and, uh, you know, all of those kind of things. And it's the same in entertainment. The creators dream of making great entertainment and great news and great products and great services. And so I think, you know, putting them into the fore and the front of the business uh, in enabling them and building a culture where people take more risk and we dare a bit because anything that you want to build into the future, uh, you, you know, you, you have to dare. And it also means that you fail here and there. I always think success, it, at, you know, success is at the end of a long line of micro failures, no? So share an example of how since you joined Proceed and Satines has taken risks, has been prepared to do something that may have failed? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, so, so where are we taking risks? We're, we're, we're moving much more digital. So I gave you an example earlier. We just set up a shop called Vert, which is entirely focused on curating content, you know, for vertical Instagram uh, kind of a world. And, you know, we're having some really interesting initial success. Um, we took you know, because we're entertainment kind of on this side and then we're, we're commerce and platforms, so everything from matchmaking to, uh, you know, to beauty on the other side. Um, and, you know, those businesses are growing rapidly. We've just invested in a company in the U.S., you know, which is counterintuitive because everybody says, well, you, you're German, why don't you stay focused on Germany? But I actually looked at some of what we do and I thought we're really world class in this and so why don't we take our world class capabilities and expand them in the biggest market? And, you know, it, it may work or it may not work, but it'll be fun trying. And yet you're facing Amazon and Netflix that are reinventing the model for commissioning and streaming content. How do you compete with Netflix? I think you compete with Netflix by not trying to be Netflix. Um, and, uh, you know, when I look at the universe of entertainment, what Netflix does really well is, you know, commission series that all of us love. And by the way, we are also producing content for them. Uh, but entertainment is so much more. It's news, it's sports, it's life, it's great shows, it's you know, it's doku, it's all of those kind of things, and it's, and, and it's a very local understanding of audiences. And it, as I spend a lot of time, you know, with the folks who've been TV creators, what I think they, they have a really good instinct for what audiences are, what they need, what time of the day, morning or evening, what day of the week, what mood are you in, and all of those kind of things. And I think you can take that 
uh, and bring that alive in a digital world that is very different to what are the wonderful offerings of an Amazon and, and the Netflix today. And I think there's a there's 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 significant uh, space for that. And don't forget that we're still in a place. By no means do I want to be complacent, but the 10 million people that are watching the voice finale are still more people than subscribers for either Amazon or Netflix. So I think if we, you know, if, if we use the formats and shows and things that people love, but move ourselves more aggressively into a digital world, create one place where I can access absolutely everything I want, then I think there's a very competitive position to be had. But you got to build it, invest in the team, build the technology. You know, there's a lot of new skill sets to pick up on. So you're coming from outside the industry saying, I have this new vision, I want change. These things are never smooth. So what have you found the biggest obstacles, the hardest things to achieving your goals of transformation? Tech is hard because, you know, entertainment and media companies have not grown up as tech companies. And so if you build a streaming platform, you know, that's a consumer product. You need to really understand how you build UI, UX. You need to really understand how you put the engineering together, um, you know, how you have perfect performance and all those kind of things. And yes, there's lots of people doing in the world, but doing that, doing that quickly and doing that, uh, you know, with great quality is, is really hard and you're building new skill sets. But it can be done. It's no different to, uh, you know, when I took on Dyson, it was a hardware company, and we had to learn how to build connected devices and how to become software engineers. And, you know, the same here. You have a, a brilliant entertainment company that burns in its heart to make us all love and entertain us, but it now is also needing to learn how to be a great tech company and how to be a great consumer company. It can be done, but for that, you need, you know, you need new skill sets. You do need a bit of fresh blood. Um, and you need everybody wanting to jump into that future. But the fresh blood, the really talented engineers, are going to want to join or create their own startups rather than work for a legacy media business. So how are you going to attract the best technical people? I, I think part is by being the best, most passionate entrepreneurial owner of startups. And, you know, I've gone around and visited all the firms we have and, you know, Parship in, in Hamburg, you look at Studio 71 that sits in Berlin. I mean, these are, you know, usually teams of 100, 150, 200 people. You know, they're young, they're very single-mindedly focused on what they do. They burn with deep passion. And, you know, and, and my job is, uh, you know, to help them do and achieve what they are passionate about best and then to use some of the, the scale muscle we have to help them grow faster, to build connections, because I can put together you know, the best influencer marketing with the biggest stars in Germany, with big reach power, and, and you know, help these develop. And I, I think if we do that today, but of course we can always do it better, and the better we do that, then we become, I think, the, you know, the best home that if you are a great inventor, you're a great entrepreneur, you're building a company that you want to be part of. And that's uh, how I see my role. You mentioned Dyson. Now, when you were at Dyson, it expanded enormously. New products, you know, yeah. autonomous vacuum cleaners and hair dryers, new markets, and a very successful business commercially, but also doing some technically very difficult things. What sort of lessons did you learn at Dyson that you think are transferable to a media business? I, I, look, culturally, you need to do a few things. No? One, you, you need to understand uh, where the world is going, which is really not that difficult. It, you know, if you are if you are of my age, then usually you have children, as do I, and I have two daughters, and you know they're 80, 90 now, and I simply look at how they consume media. And if you're not relevant in their world, well, you're not going to have a business tomorrow. And 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 so it's so I think you need to have a sense of where that world is going, and then you need to resolutely jump into the future. And the most important thing is you need to not be afraid of cannibalization. 
the fear of cannibalization is the single biggest destructor uh, of forward value because everybody sits and that's hard when you're in a company like mine because you know it's easy to be fearful and say well let's do digital but let's not do it too hard because it may you know have an impact on the revenues or the profit we make in television today and I that's not a winning strategy the winning strategy is you understand where the world is going you jump into it with everything you got you inevitably get a lot of things wrong but you learn and and you just must not be afraid of cannibalization because you look if you're not cannibalizing yourself someone else will no, and uh, you quoted a, a few of the guys who are very happy to take care of that job. So you see Studio 71, which has about, I think, 1,300 YouTube yep. channels. You see that as cannibalizing the parent business, but in useful ways. Yes, and, and in a funny way, I wouldn't mind for it to cannibalize more, to go even faster and to do more of that. And, you know, I think one of the things that will happen is today, the, the, you kind of have two entertainment universes. No, you have a TV-led entertainment universe, and then you have a, you know, YouTube influencer digital-led entertainment universe. And and the two are not connecting, uh, I think, as well as they could, because at the end of the day, it's all about what we watch. Uh, and I think that's one of the opportunities we have creating a streaming platform that you know brings the wonderful things we do in both worlds together. So you were born in Germany, but you spent a lot of the last couple of decades out of Germany. You were at Procter & Gamble in the skincare division for a long time. Um, what's it like coming back to Germany? How do you feel the economy, the leadership of the big businesses are prepared for these transformations that all sorts of businesses are facing? How optimistic are you that Germany can stay a leading innovation nation. Yeah, uh, so it's true. I've, I've, you know, certainly over the last 10 years or so, I spent more time on a plane between San Francisco and Shanghai than on a plane between uh, Munich, Berlin, and, uh, and, and Düsseldorf. I'm very optimistic for a few reasons, but there's things we need to do. And, and it was you know, really interesting to listen um, uh, you know, to what it takes to digitize uh, a government and all that, no? I, I think one of the great advantages that Europe has is the huge cultural and intellectual diversity. And there was a comment earlier, and it's very true, you know, I spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley, and inevitably when you get beyond the sales guys and you actually meet the people that do, you meet Europeans left, right and center, you know, Germans and French and you also meet Israelis and Russians and but but it's a you know, it's a it's it's very very diverse. So I think the skill sets are there. Uh, I, I think what we need to do and maybe that fits to the slogan. I think we need to have more courage. You know, I think we need to be more courageous in uh, you know, taking legacy systems, legacy companies, but really pushing ourselves into the future and inventing what comes next. Sometimes I'm in conversation where everybody thinks Amazon and Netflix are, you know, are these unbeatable giants and, and they're the end of the world. But there was a world before Amazon and Netflix and trust me, there'll be a world after it. And, and so I think if we dare and, and if we use the great human power that we have, then you know, I think Europe can be an innovator and a, and a changer, but there we must. So, just one more question, because you're a guy with TV schedules, and we have a schedule, and we don't want Steffi coming and scaring us. Um, you, you've made. Well, we got 43 seconds left. <laughs> we'll make it. We'll make it. You've, you've made some bold <laughs> statements about your goals. You said in August you're going to double the share price within five years. Um, but the share price, I think, is currently at about a seven-year low, under yep. 15 euros. So how can you reassure the markets that you are going to increase shareholder value? Well, I, it, it is, I think it's... I don't control the share price. That's the market. No, I think what we must do is we have to focus in substance 
on showing to us and to the world that we can create an entertainment business that's future fit, you know, that is uh, less reliant on TV only, less reliant on advertising, that is more digital, more mixed, uh, you know, and bring that together with a commerce business that's growing rapidly and show that those two parts are synergistic. Uh, you know, we invested in esports this year, which is, you know, going very big. We will launch uh, uh, our relaunch our seven TV streaming platform in the middle of the year, and there's two or three other things that will happen this year. And, you know, then it's very simple. It is, you know, people don't reward you for words, no? And markets are the same. When I talk with investors, they're saying, makes all the sense what you guys are doing. By the way, we are investing, which is really important because you can't win that future if you're not investing. But rightfully, markets are saying, well, do that and then start showing me that the things you're doing are leading to success. And that's what my team is focused on. And I think as that comes alive, uh, then, you know, we shall be rewarded. Max Conze, agent of transformation. Thank you. Thanks, Harry.